Good morning folks, I'm Jeff's Little Engine Service. Uh, so I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. What we're going to do today is rebuild a carburetor on the good old Briggs & Stratton twin cylinder. Uh, this particular one is a 16 horsepower, but they uh, pretty much are all the same as far as the carburetor goes. The engine sputters and uh, won't rev up. I've tried adjusting the carburetor, but it just won't run right. Uh, I also have to have the choke out uh, about halfway for it to run good, so I think it's time to rebuild the carburetor on this thing. What you want to do is take off your air filter cover. It'd be a good idea to replace this air filter, it's pretty dirty. All right, so you can see what we're dealing with now is basically um, just three bolts. You have your breather hose there, which you can basically just get, put your hand underneath and pull that out. So this is how we do it in 2017, folks. Saves on my uh, carpal tunnel syndrome I have in my wrist and it's much much quicker all right so there is a gasket there be careful not to lose it uh, now you're dealing with uh, four bolts same size five sixteenths and uh, you go ahead and take those off at this point um, it's a good idea to take off the choke cable One, two, three, four. Man, this thing's slick. All right. So be careful not to knock any more crud into the carburetor when you take this part off. Uh, once you disconnect your throttle cable here, you can lift this part right off and we can see what we're dealing with here that actually look at, looks like it's in pretty good shape that's a good sign everything's nice and clean what I do notice is uh, if you look directly down in here into the float bowl uh, you can see sediment and whatnot in there now we need to get into uh, that bolt there that's your carburetor drain plug there so what you have here is a 5 8 um, inch drain plug that you want to take out to drain the gas. Um, it's a good idea to have a rag there. There's also a little o-ring on this plug you want to make sure is in good shape. It looks like our o-ring is in pretty good shape you can see the sediment a little bit better now there's chunks of stuff chunks of stuff there and there so we'll clean all that out but what we also need to take out right now is the main jet assembly, which is located back in here. And that's that brass plug. I'm going to adjust my camera so you guys can get a better view. So yeah, that brass plug back in there is an Allen wrench. Um, and you want to be really careful taking it out because if you strip it out, it's brass. So it's really easy to strip out. So um, make sure you have the right size Allen wrench. 
As near as I can tell, it's a 3 16 So I'm going to make sure I get a good tight fit in there before I try to loosen it. Oh. All right. We're good. And sometimes you have to like, stick a screwdriver down in here to push it out to help get it out. There you go. And you'll want to make sure that this uh, main jet is nice and cleared out. Make sure the hole is clear. Some models come with a larger main jet. It's about a two inch long piece of brass. When you pull it out of there you'll just want to make sure that you clean out um, all the ports and passageways on it before you reassemble. So now we're going to take the um, fuel pump apart and you have to be a little bit careful doing this because parts literally will jump out at you. So um, be careful. I'll show you what to expect when you start taking it apart. Looks like they're quarter inch. Or you can use a screwdriver. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the fuel line just to get it out of the way. These are pretty long bolts. So there are three, I think, three springs that you have to keep track of. And I try to take it off with the black plastic part first. Okay. Oops, I forgot to remove the, uh, the vacuum hose off the bottom here. So you want to disconnect that too. You'll also want to inspect that hose to make sure there's no cracks in it or anything because that's what op operates your fuel pump um, off of your engine vacuum pressure. Okay, so I have this assembly apart. Let's take a look to see what it looks like here on the inside. So this part here is your diaphragm or your fuel, your fuel pump diaphragm. Uh, you can see we have a little copper uh, spring there and we also have this spring here that has a little cap on it. Uh, when you tip it... Oh, that's the telephone. Don't mind the phone. That thing rings all the time. So when you uh, flip it over, you'll see... Wait a sec. So, I think we're missing one of these copper springs. Uh, so you have these springs like I showed you, but we're also supposed to have a spring um, right on that post there. So I'll have to review the tape to see if that thing came flying out of there when I took it apart or if it was missing. That could explain why um, it wasn't running very well. Did you guys see that spring fly out of there? I didn't see that spring fly out of there. Review the tape! So I guess it that spring was missing, but I'll show you how to put it back on when we reassemble. You'll see your uh, carburetor mixture screw right there. You'll want to take that out and uh, make sure that those passageways are clean under there. And uh, I'll show you how to set it to the initial setting when I'm reassembling. This is the carburetor kit you'll want. It's a Briggs & Stratton part number 694056. So luckily this carburetor um, was not in that bad of shape. Um, I didn't have to scrape the gasket surface much uh, and I didn't have to clean out much from the inside. I've taken these apart before and it's been a mess taking me a couple hours just to clean out all the gunk and corrosion but luckily this one's in pretty good shape all right so let's take this apart all you have to do is pull this pin out hopefully that's not stuck in place um, and you take the float off shake it 
listen for uh, see if there's any gas in there this one's still good still floating uh, here is your float valve that you can investigate if you like um, sometimes you can tell when they're bad at the tip um, other times you can't tell and you should always replace the float valve uh, whenever you take a carburetor apart they're usually inexpensive and it's the main reason uh, for carburetor failure let's see if I can get this gasket off of here um, actually before I destroy this gasket uh, I want to match it up from the gaskets in the kit here because that's how many gaskets they give you to choose from apparently there's a lot of different models with the same style carburetor but you can see we have quite an assortment so we'll want to match it up uh, dang I think I got it on the first first grab should buy a lottery ticket uh, this one has an extra hole but I think that's the ticket so the new float needle comes in a box and be careful because this is as you can see where all your springs are so you don't want to lose those you'll need this clip and there's the valve that little copper spring like there is, is one of the springs that is missing in the carburetor So it gives you all the parts in this carburetor kit to basically rebuild the entire carburetor. And you attach the float valve just like that, the way it came out of there. Now that we've identified what gasket we need it's time to get this old gasket off of here nice it came off in one piece someone must have rebuilt this carburetor recently and they did a pretty good job except for that one spring that was missing so this is your float needle and this brass piece here is called the needle seat uh, when your carburetor gets in really bad shape you have to replace the needle and seat on this model uh, however you can get away with just replacing the needle 99 percent of the times you usually only have to replace the seat uh, if the lawnmower has had a lot of use and is about 50 years old so you'll want to clean out the inside uh, the best you can. Try to make sure there's no sediment or corrosion left floating around in there. And I usually stick a Q-tip down into the seat, something soft, and clean it out just to make sure there's no uh, particulates down there. And you'll also want to make sure that the gasket surface is ready for a new gasket gasket goes on first make sure you put it in the correct direction um, some of these gaskets fit kind of stiff so you just have to push it down into place like that now I'm going to go ahead and install the float valve I don't think it matters which way you put the spring on oh god dang mosquito Okay, the float valve is dangling off the float. Put it in place. Make sure the clip doesn't come off. They give you a new um, hinge pin in the kit, but you usually don't need it. Alright, so the pin is in place. The float can move freely. Uh, you can see the the clip is still where it's supposed to be in place so to adjust the float you just want to make sure the gap is the same in front as it is in back 
when you hold the uh, float upright like this. You want to make sure you want to make sure the float when it's in the down position has equal gap all the way around and this one does so I don't need to readjust it. So this component is ready to go back onto the rest of the carburetor. Time to clean this sucker out a bit. Kind of hard to get any sort of brush down in there, but this seems to work pretty good. There is a lot of little nooks and crannies you want to make sure to clean out. Uh, you'll also want to make sure that these tiny little passages ways here, uh, there's several holes along here. You'll want to make sure that they're clear uh, by sticking a little piece of uh, copper wire or something down through it. Just want to make sure all these little tiny holes are cleared out here. And you really want to make sure to get down in there because that's where a lot of the uh, sediment ends up and that's also where your main jet is. So make sure all those crevices down in there are cleaned out. There was also a little bit of corrosion on the front of the fuel pump here. Make sure to clean that all up. Want a nice good gasket surface all the way around. We'll go ahead and put the main jet back in. Now you be careful, you don't want to tighten it up too much uh, because it will break or strip. Just want to make sure it's good and snug. And don't forget to clean out your adjustment screw passage there. I poked some wires in there and blew some air in there and looked with a flashlight and I could see it was clear. So, so we can put that screw back in and set it to its preliminary adjustment. So the initial adjustment on the uh, screw here is one and a half turns out. <clears throat> so what you do is you screw it in all the way very lightly. Just screw it in until it, light, until it stops. Don't tighten it. Just right to there. And now you back it out one and a half turns. Half one, one and a half. And that's where you start um, for your carburetor adjustment. Once everything is put back together with a new air filter and all that, we'll adjust that screw there. So this part is all clean and reassembled. So we can go back in place. And I'm not going to use that uh, drill to tighten these up all the way because I'm always worried that that drill is going to strip things out. So I'll use a good old fashioned socket wrench for that. And when you tighten these down, as with anything, you want to kind of stagger how you tighten it down. semi-tight semi-tight and then I'll go back around and cinch them down you want to cinch them down pretty tight but uh, not so tight that you strip things out remember it is an aluminum carburetor so aluminum is pretty soft metal it's easy to strip Okay, so All right, that should be good. Now we'll work on getting this fuel pump back together. That can be kind of tricky. Don't forget the carburetor plug here. And you can replace this gasket if you want. It comes in the kit, but um, this gasket will still work. I know it'll be fine. 
this gasket goes first like so and then uh, looks like it goes like this all right so we have our new gaskets on this part and then we have our new diaphragm here which we'll install also so here's where it can start to get tricky uh, you have to start balancing all these parts um, so your first copper spring goes on that little post big one goes there and we have our little cap and then we have this this side you just want to make sure you don't have these springs fall out and then this goes together on that side like so and now we just have to um, install this last little copper spring um, on the front of the carburetor so you'll want to put this little spring in place hopefully it stays for you well here we go try to keep everything in place I will put um, the screw through the middle hole here just to help hold all the gaskets together like so and now in one movement I'm going to um, push this up against here try to keep everything in place actually I think I'm going to put in um, I think I'll put in two screws to hold the gasket and the diaphragm in place like that so now I have two screws in here all the springs are still in place I think I'll be able to put it up here okay very carefully straight on and don't worry if you mess up like I just did just take it off reposition everything and try again doesn't help that the winds blowing about 30 miles an hour out here okay try this again I think we got it this time yep and keep pressure so the springs don't fall apart when you're tightening these down. Just give it a little wiggle. Hopefully nothing's bound up in there. Not too tight because you can crack the plastic backing plate there. Right, we're almost ready to test this out. So we'll, I inspected the vacuum line; it's still in good shape. So we'll put him back on, and here's our fuel line. We'll put back on. So remember, this carburetor is empty of gas, so the fuel pump's going to have to work for a little while before it fills up the carburetor and uh, runs. So let me go ahead and close the choke. This time the fuel pump is filling up the carburetor. Yeah, it runs a lot better.
this just kind of pops into there. So I should mention uh, also that not all of these carburetors uh, have that adjustment screw down there. Some it's a um, it's a jet, so you have to take it out and clean it. But uh, there's no adjustment. You just screw it in tight and call it good. So with this one, you want to be out um, about one and a quarter to one and a half turns from um, when you screw it in and it stops. You back it out one and a half turns or so. To find the adjustment, um, you while the engine is running at a low RPM, you, uh, you turn that screw slightly one way or the other and you can tell that the engine performance improves. So um, it's just kind of a trial and error thing. Um, once you adjust it with the engine running slow, then you'll want to rev up the engine and make sure things are still running good and do the same thing with the adjustment while the engine's running at high speed um, and then go back to low speed and adjust it and you just kind of go back and forth until you find the happy spots well folks that's how you rebuild the carburetor on a Briggs & Stratton industrial commercial 16 horsepower through I don't know, I think they made them through 20 horsepower. Industrial commercial twin. It's a good looking engine. Good luck with your project, folks.